Good morning, ladies. Thanks again for joining me this morning. Um, I'm actually going to make this my last broadcast for 2021. Um, next weekend is Christmas Eve, and the weekend after that is New Year's Eve. So, um, so this will be my final one for 2021, and quite a year it has been. Um, I am wishing all of you the happiest of holidays, and I hope that you enjoy this time with your family. And speaking of family, today's topic is actually about how to um, look at different options for saving for your child, your grandchild, or maybe um, a loved one for their future college expenses. So there's a couple of tools that I wanted to talk about today. And the first one I'm going to start with are the 529 plans. So maybe you've heard of them, um, but I wanted to get a little bit more into the details on how beneficial they can actually be. So every state uh, within the United States actually offers 529 plans. And depending upon where you live, you can or don't have to participate in your state's plan. There may be a benefit that goes along with it if you utilize the plan that is offered by your state. Uh, for example, many states actually offer you a state credit for dollars that you put into the 529 plan offered by their state. So let me just give you an example being here in Pennsylvania. Um, Pennsylvania actually offers two different types of plans. One is a investment plan, which means that um, the money that is put into the plan is actually uh adjusted based upon the underlying investments that are being used or selected by you as the owner of the plan. And up to, in, in the year 2021, up to $15,000 can be used as a state credit on your state tax return. So we have the investment plan and then Pennsylvania also offers what they call a guaranteed savings plan, which is a I kind of refer to it as a prepaid tuition plan. So if you put in $1,000, you select the university choice that you'd like for the child, and it will buy credits for that university choice um, in today's dollars. So even if they are age one or two, and there is you know a 17 or 18 year time frame before they're actually going to use it, you have kind of locked in on today's tuition cost. I'm not going to get into the specifics there, but if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me a call. That one is adjusted based upon the average tuition increases each year. So you don't have the market volatility that goes along with it. I think that's why they've used the term guaranteed as part of the title, um, because you don't have to worry about a downturn happening in the market with that type of plan. So that's just an example of what Pennsylvania has to offer. Some states have up to five different plans that you can choose from. So um, there is a great uh, website called savingforcollege.com that will give you access to all the plans that are being offered by all the states. And you can do a side-by-side -side comparison on that website to determine which one makes the most sense for you. So um, take a look at that. Now, this year, the gifting allowance, this year, meaning 2021, the gifting allowance is $15,000. So you can put that into any plan to benefit another um, without having to file a gift tax return. The gifting allowance is actually going up to $16,000 in the year 2022. So keep that in mind. And with the 529 plans, they actually allow you to do advanced gifting. So what does that mean? So if we were to take a look at putting a lump sum into the plan for 2021, you can take that out over the next five years. So instead of just putting 15,000, you can put up to 75,000. Um, now they do encourage you to file a gift tax return to show that you've done this and you haven't gone over the gifting allowance, um, but you can't do another gift to that individual for the next five years. So in many situations, I've actually had grandparents who have wanted to use this as an estate planning tool. So they're actually putting the money aside um, for the grandchild. Um, in some cases, I've had one grandparent do it and the other one didn't, so they could still give the annual gifts going forward. But it's a way to get the assets out of your estate and gifted to the person that you most wanted to go to. 
So think about those options. Now, next year with it going up to 16,000 for the gifting allowance, that means you can do up to 80,000 in a five-year advance gift. And if both spouses wanted to do it, it could be up to 160,000. So something to keep in mind. Now, the benefits of the 529 plans are that they grow tax deferred. And when they are used for qualified education expenses, they are tax free. So it can be a real home run situation. Um, now, the thing that you want to be, pay attention to, especially if you're comparing plans, is there are fees associated with them. Um, there can be expenses associated with them. And you want to understand what goes into that before you make your decision. And that tax deductibility from the state level is state specific. So you want to investigate that. Um, I know the state of New York gives a pretty significant benefit as well. And especially if you live in the New York City proper, um, with the state taxes being as high, um, that you also have high local taxes. And um, you may want to consider the New York plan to take advantage of getting some of those benefits. Okay, so that's a little bit about the 529 plans. And like I said, grandparents can also open them up for the grandkids. Um, there is some tricky aspects of it when the grandparent actually owns the 529 plan that you want to be careful about when it comes to uh, the, um, um, sorry, having a brain freeze, uh, financial aid. Uh, many times it will make sense to actually use a grandparent's 529 plan in their junior and senior years so it doesn't show up as a income source and uh, deplete how much they can actually get in financial aid. So that's a little tricky, but um, there's some opportunities there. Another option is to use a Coverdale ESA, ESA standing for Education Savings Account. Now, there are some limitations on who can participate in um, the Coverdales, and that is based on income. So the modified adjusted gross income for a single individual filing has to be $95,000 or less. For a married couple, it has to be $190,000 or less. And you can only put up to $2,000 a year into these accounts. So if your income is higher than those levels, you can't um, take advantage of them. But another big advantage with the Coverdales is they can actually be used for a education expenses for kindergarten through 12th grade as well. So you might not be able to save as much there, but they can be used. So if you have a child that's going to a private school, you can actually use money that's growing in there tax deferred. And again, when it comes out, it's tax free. So the trick with these also is that at age 30, um, the child must cash them out. And there could be taxes and penalties that go along with that if they're not used for those education expenses. So what I didn't mention with the 529 plans is there is no age limitation. Um, for example, if your child gets all the way through school and there's still money left in that plan, the plan can continue to exist. You may even want to look into the future and say, well, if my child marries and they have their own children, you can name your grandchildren then as the beneficiaries of the account. Um, now, if a child gets a full-blown scholarship, you have the opportunity to take the money back out of the 529 plan. Um, there is a um, tax on the appreciation of the account, but there is not a penalty. So there is a 10% penalty if money is taken out of the account and not used for education. So I wanted to bring that up as well. Now, they have changed the rules a little bit with the 529 plans where you can use up to $10,000 from the plan to help pay for K through 12 um, private schools. So those expenses could be used from um, the 529 plan. They just put those into place, I'm going to say, in the last five years or so. So that could be an option too. Um, a fourth type of plan are either a Uniform Gifts to Minors Act account or a Uniform Transferred Minors Act account. You might want to check, again, with the states. Certain states offer the gift um, type and certain states offer the transfer type. And um, these actually look like a, for lack of better terms, a taxable account in the child's name. It would be set up as a custodial account until they've reached the age of maturity in your state. So let's just say age of majority is age 18, um, a parent or a guardian needs to be listed as the owner on the account. And at age 18, 
um, if that's the age of majority, it needs to be transferred over to the child's name and um, it becomes theirs to do with as they wish. There is no limitation on how much you can put in there. Um, gifting allowance can be taken into consideration. Um, but one thing to be aware of is that this money does become the child's at age 18. So you have to keep that into consideration. Um, there are also minors trust. These kind of went by the wayside. I saw many of those early in my careers in the, in the 1980s and the 1990s, but um, very few individuals have been using trust, especially for college savings purposes any longer um, because these other vehicles have become more, more dominant and um, are less expensive to create and less expensive to maintain. But there are the choices of these minor trust out there. So, you know, those are four different options, the 529, the Coverdale, the uh, Uniform Transfer or the Uniform um, Gift to Minors Act or Trust. So if you have any questions about those, please don't hesitate to give me a call at 412-346-4655 um, or email me, diane at pearsonfinancialplanning.com or a private message right here through Facebook. As always, I hope you found this information of value. And if you have any friends or family that you would like to have join our private group here, again, send me an email, text, phone call. I'll be happy to invite them to join us. So I hope that you have a pleasant and wonderful holiday season and look forward to the new year. And I'll be talking to you in 2022. Take care.